Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss combustion analysis of hydrocarbons. Now under more concept, we actually talk about this technique called the combustion analysis of gaseous hydrocarbon, CXHY. And the overall equation is this, CXHY in the gaseous state plus X plus Y over 4 O2 in the gaseous state obviously to give us X CO2 gas plus Y over 2 water Usually, it is in a liquid state if everything is measured at standard conditions or at room temperature and pressure. Now, the rationale behind combustion analysis, I think it is good to talk about it. Combustion analysis is a very simple technique, but actually it is very useful for us to try to identify this unknown gaseous hydrocarbon. Now, why can we use combustion analysis is because if I burn this hydrocarbon in excess oxygen, we know that the products will be CO2 and water. And in this case, if I look at the carbon in the organic compound, all this carbon in the organic compound is converted to carbon dioxide. That means 100% of the carbon inside this organic compound is being converted to CO2. And if I can capture this CO2, then I can measure how much carbon it comes from the hydrocarbon or comes from the organic compound. And carbon dioxide is fairly easy to capture, right? Because we know that CO2 is acidic. If I pass it through a base, I can actually absorb this carbon dioxide and I just measure the mass of CO2 that is being collected or I measure the change in the volume of CO2 when I pass the gaseous product through a base. So we know that the amount of carbon is measured by how much CO2 that is being formed as a product. Now similarly, if I look at hydrogen, now hydrogen, all this hydrogen in the organic compound is being converted to water. Actually water is even easier for us to collect because water, if you cool it down to room temperature, you will just condense into a liquid and water is very easy to capture. I can pass it through any anhydrous salt that can absorb water. I can measure the mass of water that is being collected. So the amount of water that is being collected is tied directly to how much hydrogen there is inside this organic compound. So by using a very simple combustion reaction and by measuring the amount of CO2 and the amount of water that is being formed, I can systematically deduce the molecular formula for the hydrocarbon. That means identifying what's the value for X and what is the value for Y. That is the reason why when we do combustion analysis, we always do complete combustion of this hydrocarbon in excess oxygen because I want all the carbon to be converted to carbon dioxide and I want all the hydrogen to be converted to water. So if I do incomplete combustion, then we will get a lot of mixture of products like unburned carbon, soot, carbon monoxide. Then it will give me a lot more products involving carbon it is a lot more troublesome for me to try to capture all these different products and later I work backwards and I find out how many carbon there is inside the organic compound. So usually for combustion analysis, we only want this complete combustion. So you notice in questions, almost always the case, they will say that the combustion of this hydrocarbon is in excess oxygen. All right, next let's have an example for us to roughly go through how do we handle questions involving combustion analysis of gaseous hydrocarbon? Now the question goes something like this. When I have 20 cm cube of gaseous hydrocarbon exploded with 150 cm cube of oxygen, the residual gases occupied 130 cm cube. Then after we shake the products with excess equals sodium hydroxide, final volume was 90 cm cube. So we want to deduce the molecular formula for this hydrocarbon. Everything is measured at room temperature and pressure. Now there are quite a few terms inside this question, but usually what we want to look out for is the volume of the hydrocarbon that is reacted off, the volume of oxygen that is reacted off, and usually the oxygen will be in excess. So we have to figure out out of this 150 cm cube, how much of it is reacted, how much of it is left, then the volume of carbon dioxide has been formed. Now for volume of water, we have to be careful because in this case, we are measuring the volumes at room temperature and pressure. 
and at room temperature and pressure, water is actually in the liquid state. And for comparing mole ratio to volume ratio, it only applies to gases. And since water, it is a liquid state, we are not interested in finding the volume of water. Actually, if you think about it, because water will condense at any temperature below 100 degrees Celsius, as long as the temperature is below 100 degrees C, water is a liquid, then in general, we can ignore the volume of water. So we want to figure out the rest of the terms. Now I have 20 cm cube of gaseous hydrocarbon. So of course this 20 cm cube will just be the volume of CXHY exploded with 150 cm cube of oxygen. Now remember, usually oxygen is in excess. This is the volume of O2 in total. I cannot use this volume for calculation. We need to work out what is the actual volume of O2 that is taking part in the reaction. Residual gases occupy 130 cm cube. So this later we will have to try to figure out what is the meaning of that. After shaking the products with excess aqueous sodium hydroxide. Now aqueous sodium hydroxide, this is a base. And the purpose of this base is to absorb our CO2. So this is to absorb carbon dioxide which is acidic in nature. The final volume was 90 cm cube. So we know that after the reaction, the volume of the residual gases is 130 cm cube. I pass this through sodium hydroxide, CO2 is being absorbed. The final volume was 90 cm cube. So what this would mean is the difference. It will be the volume of carbon dioxide. So let us try to visualize and understand this question using this diagram. So Again, what we have it is the combustion of hydrocarbon, CXHY plus O2 to give us the product, carbon dioxide and water. And at the beginning, what we have is 20 cm cube of hydrocarbon plus 150 cm cube of oxygen. Now remember, as mentioned, oxygen, there are two portions. One part is the part which will take part in the reaction. The other part is the part which is in excess. So ultimately, it doesn't take part in the reaction. So what I've done is I've split into two portions, O2 reacted and O2 in excess. In total, this volume is 150 cm3. So there's the reaction combustion between these two guys. The product, it is CO2 and water. So all this hydrocarbon is gone and all this oxygen that is reacted is also gone. So this portion here, which I've highlighted in yellow, and blue will be converted to these products, carbon dioxide and water. Now the residual gases, the volume is 130 cm cube. What we have to keep in mind is all these volumes are measured at room temperature and pressure. Water is already in the liquid state, so we would be excluding water. I'm not interested in the volume of liquids. I'm only interested in volume of gases. So this 130 cm cube would only include the CO2 that is being produced and the oxygen that is in excess. After passing through sodium hydroxide, the final volume was 90 cm cube. And since the residual gases only contains CO2 and oxygen in excess, when I pass through NaOH, the only gas that is being absorbed will be carbon dioxide. So the final volume, which is 90 cm cube, it will be the volume of oxygen in excess. And the volume of CO2, as mentioned, it will just be the difference between 130 and 90. So more or less, we can work out the volume of all these gases. The volume of hydrocarbon, it is given inside this question, 20 cm3. The volume of oxygen reacted, it is total 150 cm3 minus the excess 90 cm3. So you give me 60 cm3 of oxygen reacted and the volume of carbon dioxide will just be 130 minus 90. This will give me 40 cm3. Now, once we have the volume of hydrocarbon, oxygen reacted and carbon dioxide, I can put back into the equation and I can fill up this table. Now, the table for the balance equation is here. CXHY plus X plus Y over 4, O2, to give me X, CO2 and Y over 2, water. Now, again, in this case, since water is a liquid, we're not so interested in the volume for water. We will just leave that out. The next thing is we fill in these two rows. 
This row is the mole ratio. The second row is the volume ratio. Now mole ratio is very straightforward. I just copy the coefficient from the balance equation. So this will be coefficient one. This is x plus y over four. So this mole will be x plus y over four. This is x for CO2. This will be x. Water in this case, we're not so interested because water is a liquid. But if you want to, you can just put it down y over two. The next row is the volume row. And this information, we get it from the question. We have already predetermined the volume of hydrocarbon is 20. Volume of oxygen reacted is 60. Volume of carbon dioxide is 40. Now, when we do combustion analysis question, the mole ratio is fixed because it is predetermined by the balance equation. The volume ratio is the one that will vary. So therefore, we have to look at the question, analyze the question, decide what is the volume for hydrocarbon, oxygen reacted, CO2 that is being produced. So once we have these two rows fill up, then what we do is we compare mole ratio to volume ratio. Now mole ratio to volume ratio only works for gases. If I have two gases, gas A and gas B, then the mole ratio of these two gases is equal to the volume ratio of the same two gases. So what we can do in this case is if I want to solve for X, I'm comparing the volume of CO2 to the volume of hydrocarbon. So the number of mole of CO2 to hydrocarbon will be X divided by one, which is here, which is equal to the volume of CO2, 40, divided by the volume of hydrocarbon, 40 divided by 20, which is here. So this is the mole ratio, while this is the volume ratio. And I can solve for this, X will be equal to two. Then what I can do next is I can compare the mole ratio to the volume ratio of oxygen. The mole ratio will be X plus Y over four divided by one, equal to the volume ratio, 60 divided by 20. And again, I have an equation involving X and Y, but since X is already solved, I can just substitute X equals to two inside this expression. I only have one more unknown. I just solve for that unknown. I know what is Y, which is essentially here, the number of mole of O2 over the number of mole of hydrocarbon is X plus Y over four divided by one, which is equals to 60 divided by 20. So I can substitute the answer x equals to 2 into this expression. So 2 plus y over 4 equals to 3. So for y, y will be equals to 4. So now we know the molecular formula for this hydrocarbon because we have already solved for x and y. The molecular formula for this hydrocarbon will be C2H4. All right, so that was the discussion involving combustion analysis for a mole concept. And we have also run through a very simple example involving combustion analysis of a gaseous hydrocarbon and solving for the molecular formula for this hydrocarbon. Now, if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.